Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, back with another video. So, this video is probably going to be a long one, because I've got a lot of things I want to talk about here, and a lot of observations I want to make, and this is something that's been on my mind for a while, so let's get stuck in. So, like I said, this is one of them spur-of-a-moment type of videos. Before I go any further, just for anybody who might be new to the channel, I just wanted to make a few things perfectly clear. First of all, this movie, Shite Year, which is of course in the title of the video, and I'm sure you knew that that's what it was going to be about. I haven't seen it, I don't know anybody who has seen it, and I have no intentions whatsoever on ever seeing it. So this isn't a review or anything like that. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a modern day Disney movie, so why would I, as somebody with an ounce of dignity or self-respect, decide to subject myself to this kind of social engineering propaganda garbage. Why would anybody? Also, I wanted to make it clear that I'm not one of these clickbait grifter channels, you know, I'm not one of these gossip channels who just churn out these types of videos and talk about popular movie news, bitch and moan about Hollywood, talk about how everything is woke, and provide zero solutions or alternative entertainment at all just to get views and feed off all the negativity that surrounds these types of movies. That's not what you're going to get from my channel. So what I'm talking about is this movie Shite Year. Why am I talking about this? Why am I wasting my time talking about some garbage Hollywood movie that will be forgotten about in a couple of weeks and drift away into obscurity where it belongs? Well, there's a few things about this movie that interest me and there's a few things about the story surrounding it and a few things about it that have been on my mind for a long time and I think this is a perfect opportunity to talk about it. So for those of you who don't know, this movie came out within the past couple of weeks and predictably it tanked. I mean who would have thought a, a Buzz Lightyear spin-off movie starring some washed up simp cuck that nobody cares about anymore from a satirical 1995 kids comedy that really didn't need to be a franchise would tank at the box office. I mean, first of all, this is one of the things about Hollywood and the entertainment industry in general that so many people don't seem to understand. Now, Disney is of course a massive corporation ran by multi-billionaires, type of corporation that owns so many IPs and so many other businesses and have so much income and influence to the point where when it comes to losing money at the box office, to them it's relatively inconsequential. I mean, Disney could easily spend a billion dollars on the budget for a movie if they really wanted to. They could do it. Not even make a fraction of that money back. And it's relatively inconsequential. Right? To them it's not really a big deal. Losing money to a corporation and quite frankly a monopoly the size of Disney really doesn't matter to them at this point. To them, it's not really a big deal, okay? Don't expect to hear that, though, from these grifter channels like The Quartering or Geeks and Gamers or Nerdrotic or any of these controlled opposition gatekeepers on this platform. While they make their instant regret, Disney failure, get woke, go broke videos, they're essentially playing right into Disney and Hollywood's hands. So let me stop rambling and get to the point. So this movie comes out, makes next to no money, and becomes a box office dud. Did you really think that the people at Disney, their marketing crews, their financial advisors, all the people involved in their decision making, do you really think that they believed that a Buzz Lightyear spin-off movie would make money? Really? Do you really think they believed that? No, of course they didn't, guys. Come on, man. Because it's not about money, okay? It's, it's never been about money. I mean, all you have to do is look at the marketing for this movie. Now, I never watched any of the previews in full, but I did see snippets of certain trailers, and as soon as I even saw the poster, that's all I needed to see, and I knew exactly what this movie was going to be. Of course, Buzz was going to be a total cuck, and they were going to add some random black woman to be the real hero of the story. Buzz was going to be a 
bumbling idiot who needed to be saved and the random black woman who nobody cares about was going to get all the shine, they were going to have LGBT filth, symbolism and all that shite that modern day movies and soft reboots of this kind always just tend to have in spades nowadays. These movies are so predictable, so cliche, and at this point there's really no time, there's, there's really no point wasting time on them. But what I noticed about this one in particular is that the movie's failure appeared to have been planned from the very beginning. So one of the things I noticed about the marketing for this movie and, and the marketing that the people did for it behind the scenes is they had Chris Evans, the star of the movie, give some silly little scripted interview with someone behind the scenes and they basically spent most of the interview trying to create some sort of bait, something that was going to cause controversy for the media to latch onto. They asked Chris Evans to address some of the criticism the movie was obviously going to get for its LGBT propaganda, right? That, that's obviously something that was going to piss off some people and turn them off. You know when it comes to these groomer movies, they basically have to prepare themselves to play the victim and when the parents and the rational people get concerned about the degeneracy and all the propaganda, all the trash that's being shoved upon their children. And of course, Chris Evans being a Hollywood actor, and, and look, Hollywood actors are basically the ultimate conformists, right? They read their scripts, memorize their lines, and recite and spew whatever garbage their handlers tell them to say. They've got no real thoughts and no real opinions of their own. And Chris Evans basically gave the most basic, predictable, and j just damn right cliche response you could imagine. You know the deal, calling people idiots, homophobes, and whatever, and all the usual boring, scripted buzzwords that these Hollywood conformist groomers get told to say. But one thing that he said that really seems to have gone over a lot of people's heads is he said, those people die off like dinosaurs. Now, at face value, that seems like a just a not-so-clever way of calling people with morals and standards old-fashioned, right? Ba basically, people who don't want their children to be groomed by Hollywood nonces, Chris Evans is calling them old-fashioned. At least that's what it seems like at face value. But I believe, personally, that there's more to it than that. You see, Hollywood movies... There's a certain thing in these movies called dramatic irony. At least I think that's what it's called. I'm, I'm not like a film student or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure I've heard it in, in like a drama class somewhere. There's a thing called dramatic irony. Le at least, like I said, I, at least I think that's what it's called. Basically, it's when characters in movies say things that either reference or foreshadow certain things that will happen later or are in some way relevant. Now, using the term dinosaurs, saying these people die off like dinosaurs, saying that specifically, I found that very ironic, because this, of course, was said by Chris Evans, not after the movie's release, before the movie's release, and one of the major news stories surrounding Shite Year when it came out was the fact that it was reportedly being outsold by Jurassic World, which is, of course, a dinosaur movie. I don't know about you guys, but me personally, I don't think that was an accident. Also, with Shite Year, you know, with it, of course, being a Pixar movie, that's very interesting to me, too, when I think about it, because anybody who knows anything about Pixar and has done a bit of research into them might be aware that one of Pixar's colossal failures, like one of the biggest failures they've ever they've ever been involved with. In fact, speaking just in terms of financial failure, it was probably their only failure before the release of Shite Year was the movie The Good Dinosaur. For those of you who don't know, it was a Pixar movie from 2015, I think it was, where the story was about if the dinosaurs never died, what would have happened. It was a silly movie and it bombed hard at the box office. But I don't know, guys. To me, saying those people die off like dinosaurs, I think there was more to it than that. And and to me, it wasn't a coincidence. It was just something that went over a lot of people's heads, but 
I, but whatever, I digress. My point is that clearly Disney, Pixar, Chris Evans, and whoever else, whatever groomers were involved in the making of Shite Year, clearly they knew beforehand the movie was going to fail. Clearly they knew it. How could they not have known it? So why was the movie made? Well, this is where it gets interesting to me. And this is something that I've understood for a long time. The reason why these types of movies get made had nothing to do with making money. It had nothing to do with um, creating a franchise or anything like that. It, it wasn't about any of the superficial stuff you think of. The reason these movies get made is for the purpose of cancel culture. Now, what exactly do I mean when I say cancel culture? This is the part of the video that's going to lose people. This is the part of the video where I think a lot of people are not really going to understand where I'm coming from. But when I say cancel culture, what I mean by that term is not what you think it means. Now, most people associate the term cancel culture with somebody it, with a with a position of influence, like somebody in the media or some politician or someone in Hollywood, whatever, someone who owns a big business, someone who's well-known on social media, whatever. Somebody says something and a bunch of idiots on Twitter, a bunch of bot accounts or whatever, a bunch of virtue signaling spastics basically disinvowel the person and say, we will never... We will never allow that person in our club or whatever. Like, that that's what most people think of when they think of cancel culture. But when I think of the term cancel culture, to me, it means something a little bit more literal. Now, I don't know if anybody else sees it this way, but when I first heard the term cancel culture, and the more I heard cancel culture over the years, the more I heard it being said, the more I really pondered the meaning of it and the more I thought about it. Now... Why am I bringing up cancel culture? What does that have to do with this movie? So, you guys might recall I actually did a review a few years back when they made Toy Story 4. Now, the reason I did a review for that movie in particular is because the Toy Story franchise, when I, when I was a kid, you know, that, that franchise, of course, meant a lot to me, like, as it did to a lot of kids who grew up in the 90s. But me in particular, that movie had a big impact on me because it was the first movie that I... I mean, if it, if it wasn't the first, it was it was definitely one of the first. It, it was more, more than likely the first movie I ever saw in cinema. I believe when I was one year old, when that movie came out, my mother took me to the cinema to see it, and I was just hooked on it. It was my favourite movie as a kid. I watched it time and time again, had the toys and whatnot, had, had all the merchandise. I was a big fan of it as a kid, and it was something that I grew up with. And then when they, when they made the sequel... And it turned out to be like, it, it was It was one of the first ever sequels involved with Disney, which was actually almost as good as the original, you know, because it kind of bucked the trend of sequels being terrible. That was one that actually stood the test of time and it actually became sort of a timeless classic. Like the first movie was a very satirical comedy and it was a great one. It was really well written. It was really funny and it was a great movie for kids and it had a lot of adult humor in there too. But it also had like a few life lessons in there and stuff like that. And the second movie did even more world building. And then I think something like 11 or 12 years later, they made a third movie. And that, that came out in like 2010. And I was, uh, I think, 16 when that, when that movie came out. And I, I was just about to leave home. So I kind of grew up with that franchise, if you know what I mean. And the third movie ended the series. It ended the franchise on a high note. And I don't know about you guys, but to me, it, it was it was something that just, to me, it represented my childhood. It's something that I grew up with. It's something that I cared about very much. And it really got me thinking about the term cancel culture, because the third movie had the perfect ending. It ended the series with a bang. It was like, like a massive, massive phenomenon at the time. And it was said when that movie was coming out, this is the final chapter you know, this is the end of the series. We gave every character a great send-off. And it also had a very, very interesting message behind it. Like, I'm not saying it was all good. I'm not saying that there wasn't groomer stuff hidden in there. But at least at face value on the surface, it was a very family-friendly movie with a with a really beautiful message. It, it, was, it was a great send-off to the series. So then, years later, when they made Toy Story 4, and they basically took those same characters retconned the ending of the third movie 
and tore everything apart and destroyed it. That obviously pissed me off. Usually a thing like that wouldn't piss me off, but because it was the Toy Story franchise, that really got to me, if you know what I mean. So I did a long review, I ranted about it, and I said not much more about it after that, you know. And, and, and basically, it really made me think, when I saw Toy Story 4, that was what really made me ponder the meaning of this cancel culture thing. I, I'll give you another example. Now, I'm not much of a, a Star Wars guy, but obviously a, a lot of people who grew up in the 80s, for example, and, and the early 90s and whatnot, you know, a, a lot of these people were big, massive, like, Star Wars fans. Like, Star Wars was a huge cultural phenomenon. So if you grew up with that, and, um, you, you know, you enjoy, you have great memories of playing Star Wars or watching the movies and whatnot, you, you know, that will obviously be, to some of you at least, and it's not really that to me, but to some of you at least, it would, it would be a big part of your culture, right? A big part of your history and a big part of your childhood. So it'll mean a lot to you. So then when, of course, Disney got their claws into Star Wars and started to make these uh, soft reboots. I know that technically they're sequels, but really what they did with these reboots is they they retconned the old movies. They basically changed the ending. So no, this isn't this isn't how it ended. This is what happened. You know, Luke Skywalker didn't defeat the Emperor and redeem his father and save the galaxy and blow up the Death Star. No, that's not what happened. All he did was make this blunder that made all this worse stuff happen. And now the feminists have got to come and save the day and he can just go screw himself because he <laughs> because he's an idiot you know that's you, you see where i'm going with this it's like they they took what you thought was the finale and, and the conclusion of that series that you loved and they tore it apart and destroyed it you know they're, they're doing that with all the franchises now they're doing it with obviously ghostbusters star wars um they're, they're, they're doing it with lord of the rings now and apparently obviously they're doing it with toy story what they're doing with these series, they're not making these movies to make money. Like, Disney didn't spend, I don't know how many billions of dollars to acquire the license to the Star Wars movies just so they could make money off them. No. What they wanted to do, and th this is what, in my opinion, the occult does, th this is part of this cancel culture ideology. What they do is they take characters, they take franchises, they take parts of our history, and, and look, the... Obviously, this doesn't just apply to movies and, and, and entertainment media. No, this, this applies to our own history and our own culture outside of that. You know, things that maybe matter even more. But I'm just using this movie as sort of a, a catalyst so you guys understand. I'm, I'm using this as an example, basically. They take these franchises, they take these movies, and they tear them apart. So they'll take a character people like, like Buzz Lightyear. People loved Buzz Lightyear in the Toy Story movies. The, the character was a badass, right? In the first three Toy Story movies, he was a hero. He was smart. He was intelligent. He was extremely um, confident. Uh, he was a leader. He was a guy who was assertive, who knew who he was. He was comfortable in, in the type of character he was. You know, he was the type of character who would jump straight out a window to save his friend's life. He would jump straight into a furnace to save his friend's life, even though he was a toy. He was, in his mind, he was still a superhero, right? He was a space ranger. That's who the character was. But then when Toy Story 4 came out, they took that character and they made him a bumbling idiot. They made him a cook. They made him a clown. And they made him a complete joke. They basically bastardized and corrupted the character. And they, they did the same thing to every character in that movie. And that's my point. Why movies like Shite Year exist, right? Why these movies come out has nothing to do with making money. It has nothing to do with trying to create culture of their own. What these movies do is they taint your culture. So let's say you sit down to watch the original Toy Story now, or you watch the original trilogy. You, yeah, you can still watch those movies. You can still enjoy those movies. But you're always going to have that nagging thought in the back of your mind, aren't you? That this isn't really how it ends, is it? Like, this, you're always going to have that nagging thought in the back of your mind that this is no longer a satirical 90s cartoon comedy for kids. No, this is some sort of LGBT political statement. That's, that's what this really is. That's what this represents now. That's what this really stands for now. You're always going to have that in the back of your mind. You know, you're, you're never going to be able to watch 
Luke Skywalker blowing up the Death Star and think of it as any more than some sort of LGBT communist propaganda, are you? Like, maybe it was always that. Maybe that was always the plan. But my point is that when those movies were being made and when they came out, they were a big part of our culture. They were a big part of history. And that culture and that history was taken from us and it was destroyed. And that's why these movies are being made. So when these grifter clickbait channels talk about Disney failing, they losing money, instant regret, get woke, go broke. All they're doing is giving these movies free promotion, first of all. But not only that, they're just feeding into this beast. That They're just going to continue to dupe the public, you know, dupe the viewing audience of, of these channels and, and potentially these movies. It doesn't matter if the movies make money or not. That's the point. The very fact that they exist, the very fact that they are are even made in the first place, taints the original. So, yeah, that, that's all I had to say here. I just, I just felt like um, rambling some thoughts on this movie's shite year and um, what's really going on with it. It's, let me know what you guys think. I thought this was an interesting topic. What do you think of my interpretation of this idea of cancel culture? Because it's something that has been on my mind for a very long time and I just wanted to share my thoughts with you guys. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. Stay tuned for more content. Um, I don't know if videos like this will be the norm. This is just a one-off, I think. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching. God bless.